Hi, I'm Dr. Greco. You have found your way to my implant video. So that tells me you have some interest in what a dental implant can do for you. The science and the practice of implant dentistry, which is replacing a missing tooth with an implant, has advanced considerably in the past 20 years or so. As you may already know, a dental implant is a very high-tech titanium metal post that is surgically implanted into the jawbone. This metal post is what a new crown will sit on. Many of my patients say it's like having a brand new tooth. They're definitely happy that they invested the time and the money into getting their bad or missing tooth replaced with implants. Losing a tooth should not be an embarrassment. Oftentimes, especially those teeth in the front, have been traumatized or damaged at an early age from hitting them on a bicycle handlebars, falling face first onto the pavement, or getting hit by a baseball, or catching an elbow in the face during a basketball game. Other patients have had recent trauma or decay that went untreated, or bone loss that is failing to keep the teeth solid in bone. And an implant or implants can help to reverse the situation of having to eat only soft foods, which are often unhealthy. Over the next few minutes, I will cover the benefits of what dental implants may do for you. Your dentist or your doctor may have referred you here for some information on how to replace one or more of your teeth with implants. There are so many factors involved with the successful placement of an implant that it's impossible to cover them all in this introductory video. However, I would like to review some scenarios where implants can be placed so when we do get the chance to meet in person, you'll know to ask the most important questions, such as, do I have enough bone for implants? If there is, is the quality of the bone good enough to maintain an implant? If there's not enough bone, then how can the appropriate amount of bone be placed there? So, you are probably wondering, what is the best situation for an implant placement? While there is no real best scenario, the most important factor is that you have enough healthy bone for an implant to take hold. Healthy bone is bone that does not have infection in it. So, the best implant scenario is when a tooth is traumatically lost. For example, let's suppose you're helping a partner harvest avocados from a tree, but instead of dropping into the basket, one accidentally hits you in the front of your mouth and, unfortunately, your front tooth breaks off just below the gum line. What do you do? Okay, so you have just broken your tooth off or you've lost it because of decay, failed root canal or periodontal disease. Well, one common remedy is a bridge. This is where your dentist uses the teeth on both sides of the missing tooth as an anchor for the false tooth to fill the gap. However, the process involves weakening the adjacent teeth because the hard tooth structure, the enamel, is removed in order to accommodate the bridge. Oftentimes, these virgin teeth, meaning they have never had fillings, um, are cut down to use as a bridge. Also, a bridge procedure can upset the cosmetic appearance of the anterior six teeth. That is your eye tooth to eye tooth across the front of your smile. Replacing one tooth will not be as noticeable as replacing or trying to match three teeth. Now, you could use a flipper, which is an appliance that comes in and out. The problem with the flippers is that they are annoying at best and completely impractical at worst. It makes it hard to eat without removing the flipper, which, of course, then reveals the missing tooth, not what you bargained for, especially in social settings. Most de uh, dental professionals will agree that a flipper is not a good long-term solution. So, chances are it will be so annoying that it would be just what it is called temporary and you will seek out another solution. Hands down, your best long-term solution is a dental implant. That's because an implant does not weaken the adjacent teeth by placing an artificial surface against a shaved down tooth surface because the implant is made of super strong space age titanium metal. Now you may be wondering, how long will the implant last? Well, the rule of thumb is, if the implant is stable, 
meaning it has good bone support and it is well integrated at the end of one year, then there is a 98.5% chance that it will be in the same situation at the end of 5 years, 10 years, and 20 years. In contrast to a crown or a cap, which insurance companies say have an average life of 5 years. If you're really lucky, you may get up to 20 years out of a crown. So, if you are 40, chances are you will need to get the crown replaced, and probably along with a root canal or two, at least two or three times in your lifetime. If your decay rate is high, meaning you have a lot of fillings and crowns, then you are looking at replacing this crown and the adjacent crowns, which may translate into additional loss of teeth. This will net, uh, lead to the next dilemma, which is your function. If you are in the situation that you have a back tooth or a molar that has been deemed non-restorable or it can't be fixed and will need to be removed, again, you are in a dilemma. What should you do? Well, until the past 20 years or so, a common practice has been to replace that tooth with a bridge, as I showed you. However, if the tooth on either side are virgin, I would recommend and you should opt for the implant. Again, if, the, if you replace a lost tooth with an implant, it will give more stability to the teeth on either side, making the area much stronger. As you may already know, a root canal, a root canal removes the tooth's nerve and blood vessels. Once the nerve and blood vessels have been removed, the tooth has lost its nutrition. This makes it more fragile, like porcelain, and more likely to fracture. Now, if your bridge is requiring two compromised teeth to support the bite pressure of three, especially in the back, one of them is bound to give way or fracture sooner or later. It's interesting to note that insurance companies figure the average life of a bridge is 7.4 years, so when, not if, the bridge gives way, you are then faced with replacing two or three teeth. Your options then become much less desirable. You'll either need a long span bridge or else a partial denture, which you'll have to remove and replace on a regular basis. Or, of course, you could do nothing and just leave the space open, which is usually what happens when you have removable teeth, especially on the lower. A problem is that if the space is left open, your opposing teeth will start shifting their position. They begin drifting out of the bone until they have something, anything, to bite against or to hit against, which in turn may cause tooth loss and possible need for more root canals and crowns. This undesirable condition can only be avoided by replacing the space with two or three implants, but wouldn't it have been better to have just replaced the original missing tooth with one implant seven years ago? It would be the strongest tooth in that area and would have protected the root canal teeth on either side, and you would have avoided all of these complications and expenses. By the way, you may be wondering how long can you wait after losing a tooth before acting on getting an implant? This is a very good question. The answer is the sooner the better. Here's why. The longer your jaw is missing that tooth, the more bone you will lose in that area and the more the adjacent teeth will begin to shift. These two problems alone can cascade uh, or can cause a cascade of negative dental issues that ultimately lead to much greater discomfort. And your options down the road become considerably less desirable and more expensive and difficult to remedy.